things that you think makes your town special? Oh, all of our amenities, number one. And we are the oldest public park in the United States, and that is Mineral Spring Park. Those are, those are two of the, uh, of the uh, most special things I think anybody could ever ask for or want for in a municipality. And our people. So if people have not been to Williamston, the first place to go is the park, visit? And first place to go is Mineral Spring Park, walk the trails, and uh, uh, you get out and enjoy all that Williamston has to offer. And then once you've been around here for a while, you can find those little hidden niche places like the Williamston Reservoir and other places to visit. <clears throat> What are two or, the, two or three of the most important things that happened this year for Williamston? <sighs> two or three of the most important things. Well, number one is grant funding. We're able to obtain um, several grant funds for water and sewer projects. Um, those are, that would probably be the number one thing that, that we've been the benefactor of. Um, number two is the positive growth that we've seen. Um, we can look at hospitality tax and tax revenues and be able to tell that, that there is some growth. Um, Again, I add that our administration does a very, has done a very good job historically of ensuring that the growth we do have is positive growth. In other words, we've had planning and zoning in place for quite some time now, so we know what that growth is going to look like. Um, you've had uh, the Brock Lane development has gotten off the ground. They're, uh, they're clearing now and uh, uh, doing some site work and preparation. Uh, those new homes are slated to go in um, in 2024. So How we're many houses will that. be over there? That's going to be 60, I believe around 60 total. You'll have... There's two phases um, in two different price points. Um, one will be Saratoga Oaks, the other Saratoga Villages. So Saratoga Oaks is going to be geared more toward your uh, folks my age, your second, third time home buyer. Um, and then the uh, Saratoga Villages will be geared more toward your, um, your senior population that maybe uh, would like to be close to their, to their kids who lives in Saratoga Oaks. So um, they'll be right there you know, across the road from them. Has housing been a challenge over here? Housing's been a tremendous challenge. for. I, it's not just Williamston. I think it's the entire, um, at least South Carolina, I know for, for a fact the upstate. Um, if, you, if you were to try to get a rental home right now, they're just, they're just not available. And the, the home market right now is such that, you know, what was a $150,000 house, you know, two or three years ago is now 300000 plus. So uh, uh, housing has uh, definitely been a challenge for, for not just us, but everybody around our area. And y'all have had a number of other houses go up this year too, right? And housing. Yeah, so we've had, don't quote me on it, but we've had uh, 25, 30 go up at Palmetto Point. That's over by Palmetto uh, Middle School. We've also got another 90 slated to go on, uh, on uh, Mahaffey Road. Um, they're, they're finalizing the details on that one. But um, the ones on Palmetto Point, they're either under construction. I think about half the subdivision has been built. Um, and then there's interest in a couple more properties uh, throughout the town that I can't discuss at the moment, but um, there's certainly a lot of interest in, in our local area. Any other uh, big economic news or new businesses or anything that were marked in 2023? Yeah, so in November we closed on Big Creek Station. I don't, I don't know if I've talked to you uh, yet or not about Big Creek Station, but that's our old water plant. Um, we've, we've talked about some development for that. It's been an eyesore since we closed it down in the 90s, um, late 90s, and uh, that's along our walking path um, just off College Avenue. So we finally closed on that, that deal in November, and basically what that does is uh, it allows the developers to receive that property, um, provided they put, uh, there's a certain amount, I don't remember exactly the number, but it's, it's several million dollars in investment into that property. So we've taken uh, what was an eyesore and turned it into an economic development opportunity. They have, currently have um, one verbal commitment from a uh, real, uh, not a realtor, a retail uh, or, and or food establishment to go into that location. Um, that consists of the old pump house and the old water treatment plant. That's Again, that's right behind the fire department. So uh, it's gonna be a really unique uh, place. The same folks that developed it also developed Hampton Station, downtown Greenville. Um, so if you're familiar with that location, it'll have the same feel and the, attract the same clientele that, that, uh, that you see down at Hampton Station. Any other new businesses this year? We've had several new businesses. We just had a new uh, barber shop open up right beside Town Hall. Um, at, at least I think they've opened up. They've got their sign up. I haven't had a ribbon cutting yet for those. Um, we've had Bojangles open up this year. That's been a uh, big, big success. And one of the things that, uh, Greg, that I looked at with hospitality tax, um, you know, that's, hospitality tax is a pretty good gauge to be able to tell what, what the uh, climate is doing, particularly retail and uh, fast food. Um, and the state of the economy. I fully expected for some of the other restaurants to go down a little bit to, to make up for the, the market share that, that uh, Bojangles picked up. I found that not to be the case. 
um, it, it's ended up being in addition to what we already had uh, coming in and what the existing uh, uh, restaurants are already doing. So that's uh, that's definitely encouraging news. We know we know that there's a lot of uh, market leech as far as uh, people go to Anderson to eat and uh, outside of the city limits that that we want to keep those folks in town to to, uh, to dine and enjoy uh, all the amenities we have to offer. How much has the hospitality tax helped you? And what do you, what do y'all remind people what y'all do with that money? All right, without hospitality tax, I'm just going to be um, be frank with you. Without hospitality tax, there would be no Mineral Spark, Mineral Spring Park or Brookdale Park or um, or any of the amenities that we that we know um, as it is currently. Not saying they wouldn't be a part, but it certainly wouldn't be as nice. We wouldn't have pickleball courts, things like that. So hospitality tax is 2% on prepared foods uh, within the city limits of Williamson. Not your grocery grocery bill. Um, this is strictly prepared food, so a sub sandwich, McDonald's, um, that, those type things. And uh, everybody pays into that 2%. Primarily, that 2% goes to fund our youth recreation program. And that, that youth recreation program is eight to 900 strong every year. And that includes football, soccer, um, baseball, girls softball, there, there's a lot of activities that go on. In addition to any type of improvements in any of our parks, those type of things come out of hospitality tax. Hospitality tax can only be used for tourism related events or things that, that bring people into town that they would ordinarily not, wouldn't have a reason to come. So my thoughts on hospitality tax, instead of having a $20,000 concert, one and done and you just blew 20,000 bucks, is let's try to do things that will be lasting that will continue to bring people in. Pickleball courts, improvements to basketball courts in Brookdale Park, improvement on shelters, those type things um, bring people in for you know, 10, 15, 20, 25 on up years. Um, and, and we've seen that to be a successful model. Uh, whenever I took office, we were generally generating about 180 in hospitality tax. We're now around 300, a little over 300. So that, that's a pretty good jump. Um, so the things that council's doing and uh, uh, is working. It's been very, very effective. And for a town your size, y'all have a lot of parks. How important is that to this community? Um, so you got Mineral Spring Park, number one. Let me identify the parks. That is, that's 10 acres right in the heart of town. was given to us by West Allen Williams, uh, the founder of Williamston. So um, obviously that's the heart and the focal point of our town. But in addition, we have two community parks. You have Gray Drive uh, Park, which started as a walking trail. There's a little playground equipment there. That's over off the Mill Village. Not directly on the Mill, Mill Village, but directly off of it, um, where I grew up. And then you also have Brookdale Park in the historically African-American community. Um, Brookdale Park is uh, probably another six, seven acres, I think it is. Uh, we've got a baseball field, shelters, restrooms, basketball courts, um, those type of things. We've recently done some improvements over there, too. We put the same lighting that we have on the pickleball courts over there on Brookdale. So now folks can go out and play. Uh, shoot some hoops at, in, at night and in the evenings. And then, and then in addition to the, the three parks, we also obtained a uh, veterans park when the National Guard left um, several years ago. So we now uh, maintain and control veterans park too. And it's a little, little known uh, park. We actually consider it part of Mineral Spring Park, but it's actually a separate park um, directly behind Mineral Spring Park. And really the only good way to access it will be by our trails or you go park around by the uh, Masonic Lodge uh, there's a parking lot there off of Gossett, and then you can take the footbridge across into there, and you, there's a uh, old World War II tank, and there's a walking trail back there as well. Very nice area. That's also one of our most uh, pristine areas along the creek uh, to be able to sit and enjoy the creek. Any, any updates on the possible expanding the trails to bring the cities together and stuff? Yeah, so Williamston is already moving forward with, with the trails. We've got some grant funding, and um, uh, the grant funds that we have is a 50-50 match. It's an ARC grant. And that's going to take us from minerals, excuse me, from Veterans Park, we just talked about, extended on out toward Mill Street. Um, that funding is in place. We, we're ready to rock and roll. I've been working with the Appalachian Council of Governments. They're managing that grant. Um, one of the issues that we ran into, though, is there's some uh, potential jurisdictional issues with the Corps of Engineers with that potentially being a wetland. So uh, we've worked with engineers and we work with the Corps. And that right now, they actually have it in study trying to determine if they have jurisdiction with it being a wetland or with it, with it doesn't. So once they make that determination, we'll be able to proceed forward. That's also the same uh, footprint that the wastewater treatment, uh, excuse me, wastewater line that we're looking to replace from uh, Veterans Park 
all the way down to the uh, to the wastewater treatment plant that will follow the same footprint. So hopefully we can save some dollars there too by, if nothing else, just silt fencing those type of things that you would ordinarily have to do under construction anyway. Um, so that's in place. Um, that's already funded. Our next project, which we'll apply for in 2024, which will take from our where I told you about Big Creek Station, where the old water treatment plant is, extend that back out toward the middle schools. And then we'll just continue building on that. Um, down Depot, the, the plan is uh, to connect the three municipalities through Depot, and ultimately from that point, it's, it's you know, endless possibilities, whether we connect the Swamp Rabbit Trail or uh, the Blue Trail um, along the Sluder River. Um, so those plans are still in place. Uh, unfortunately, it just takes a while for those things to come to fruition, get all the parties together and get funding. Funding has been a tremendous um, issue. We, we, we're, we're getting funds. The problem is those funds aren't going anywhere near as far as they did four or five years ago. What used to be a million dollar project, um, and you could do you could do a million dollars worth of work, is now a $10 million project, and you get about $500,000 worth of work. So um, everybody's busy right now uh, as far as in the construction world. and. Uh, Right now, we've, we've taken some of those funds we could have expended and just held on to them in hopes that market's going to either settle down and uh, allow us to be able to accomplish uh, more bang for our buck. How about the events? Was it a good year for events? I know you have a lot of events over here. We had an excellent year for, for events. Um, we started out with, I believe, Pig in the Park was our first event. We've had, we, keep in mind, in the spring, we also have several concert series, mini concert series. Those are all, you know, generally well attended. When I say well attended, a couple hundred people show up. Um, so though, that it gives people things to do on Thursdays. So Envision Williamson does that concert series. Um, that was very well attended. You had Pig in the Park was a huge success this year. We also had some wood carving this year, which worked out really, really well. It was pretty interesting. Gave a little, another, um, another layer of things to do um, during Pig in the Park. So that was a huge success. Our 4th of July celebration, oh my word, was unbelievably good. You know, it was a threat of rain. It, almost everybody canceled around us. And uh, we were able to get that window and it worked out. The weather was absolutely gorgeous. We had a wonderful time doing that. Um, and then you had uh, uh, Spring Water Festival. Uh, ended up being a really, really good time. And it was hot. And I think that their Spring Water Festival committee is looking to make some changes uh, in the 2024 year. Um, that I'll, I'll let them share their information, but I, that should be a pretty exciting year uh, for Spring Water Festival as well. Um, obviously, our Deck the Halls and our Winter Wonderland event, I think you were here for it. Everything was perfect with the exception of that blasted tree that uh, seems to give me a fit every single year. It's become a tradition. Um, though, it's right become now? a tradition of just, make, hey, make a fool out of the mayor, right? Um, we all count down, and then we count down again, and then a third, fourth, fifth time, and uh, eventually it just kind of comes on, you know. Um, uh, there's a, you, the only thing you can do is just laugh when things like that happen. Um, so hopefully, we, we've got some plans to add some additional Wi-Fi hotspots at just outside the building and limit it for nothing but the tree because what happens when you've got all those people come at one time, uh, I don't know if their bodies or their phones or what just absorbs every bit of the Wi-Fi signal, but it drops to nothing and that tree does not talk uh, to my phone, which I mean, it's a really, really unique concept, right? I open the phone, count down, depress a button, the tree lights up. Um, and it's a real novel idea when it works and I can go out there now and it'll work all day long. But you get a thousand people or more out there, forget it, it's not gonna work. So hopefully we'll make some changes next year and get that uh, working properly. And you got the parade in, y'all managed to dodge the rain on that. Yeah, well I guess one of those other things that, you know, several, several uh, municipalities actually canceled their parades this year. We were able to get it squeezed in, albeit a little bit wet. Um, it was, for all things considered, it was a pretty good turnout. Um, a lot of a lot of good time was had by everybody. Plenty of candy to go around, so had a really good time with it. That's always a tough call too. You're kind of dang if you do, dang if you don't. But but my thoughts are on it. A lot of people put a lot of effort into those things, unless it's just absolutely detrimental. We we it, it, the other thing too, we had already rescheduled one time, so there was no reschedule on the third time. It's we either do or we don't, and so we don't take attendance at our parades. So the decision was made to, uh, to roll on with it. If you can make it great, if you can't make it great. And uh, fortunately, a lot of people made it and we had a really good turnout and a good time. Is the, the holiday season the most visited time of year for town hall because of your trees and there stuff? There is no doubt about it. Williamston becomes absolutely magical um, this time of year, basically from any time from Thanksgiving or winter, winter Wonderland event to all the way up until the first or second week of January. Um, 
sometimes I, I have the, this is a, a beautiful office, beautiful complex. I'm rarely ever here, um, but when I am here, it's generally in the hours of non-working hours. So uh, early in the mornings, late evenings, that type of stuff. And it's just absolutely an honor and a privilege to be able to come into a place like this and an office like this and to see um, uh, the community, people from all over come to tour. You know, I'll be in here working and folks just pop their head in and I'm like, come on in. And uh, ask them where they're from and to figure out where people are coming from, Fountain Inn, Simpsonville, out of state. I mean, you see people come from all over just to visit um, this municipal complex, see the trees and see the lights and obviously Mineral Spring Park. What things have you and council identified as sort of the priorities for the first quarter of 2024? So one of the biggest things that we've, obviously we're focused on infrastructure. That, that has been my number one priority from the get-go. Um, we were blessed to receive some ARPA funds from the federal government. Um, initially it could only be used for infrastructure and then they kind of uh, started doing interim final, final rule, the next to final, and then it, long story short, it ended up being, hey, it's a gift. You can use it ever how you want to. Um, and, but we have kept, council um, has kept good restraint on, on how we use those funds and we still want to use them for infrastructure. And the reason being, we have since kept the can on infrastructure um, for far too long. And, and we, we, we rarely ever have the opportunity to be able to make a big, big difference at one time. Um, so we've held on to the vast majority of our ARPA funds and using that to leverage it with other funds um, to be able to bring those projects, much, much needed projects to fruition. Um, one of the things, the Mill Village Water Project, those lines have been in the ground since the 30s and 40s. Um, so we've, we've done the design on it. We've gotten some preliminary costs. Um, I think those projects have been bid or they're, they're getting ready to be bid out. And depending on how those numbers come in, if those numbers come in way, way over budget, like I'm expecting, we may just hold on to it, continue to make repairs until that market can settle down a little bit. Infrastructure is the number one thing. <clears throat> Secondly is we're looking to do some uh, pretty major things with hospitality tax. and. and, and and what I mean for that, we don't typically get a large chunk of money to do a major project, um, but we may look at bonding out maybe 10, 20 percent of our hospitality tax for, you know, five or 10 years to do a big project, you know, a million dollar project. I don't know what that looks like. Could be a uh, renovation to our baseball fields. It could be. There's a whole list of issues that council and I, we're, we're planning to have a uh, work session before or a retreat prior to budget time and start just brainstorming, putting ideas to paper and uh, prioritizing those ideas and getting a consensus and building that consensus and then developing a game plan to try to implement. And those are the kind of things you talk, we've talked about before, I think, infrastructure and sewer and water and these that most taxpayers don't think about when they think about no, and, budgets and, and stuff. And here's the other thing. Water and sewer, are, as they should be, are very highly regulated. Um, anytime you put highly and regulated together, that means highly expensive as well. Um, Williamston has done a very, very good job of keeping those numbers down. You know, I see, uh, see people go, well, my water bill is high. Well, it's, it's more than just water. You've got water, you've got sewer, you've got garbage pickup, and then you've got all the DHEC required fees and all that other stuff built into one. Overall, comparatively speaking, I'm not saying that our water bill shouldn't be lower, and I'd love to lower them, but comparatively speaking, um, with all that goes into it, we do a lot of work on a very tight, tight budget um, and, and very, very good stewards of those funds that are available to us to continue to provide water and sewer. That's, uh, um, those things, there's, there's cost we do not have control over. For example, our water cost, when Anderson Regional goes up on, on their cost to us, which we buy wholesale, water from them, we have to pass that on to our consumer. Otherwise, um, we would end up bankrupting the public utility. Prior to this year, we had absorbed almost 30% cost increase over um, quite a number of years, and that, that's just not sustainable long term. Um, I'm not willing to bankrupt the public utility simply to say we've never raised rates. Sometimes you have to. I don't like it. Um, I've got probably more water bills than anybody um, in the city. Um, and, and I don't like having to pay additional water bills either, but we do a very, very good job of keeping those costs as low as possible and to try to leverage our funds with grants so that we don't have to come out of our general fund to, to, do, to make major improvements. The end of this year also means you're losing one of your amigos. Uh, Wes Pelzer, Mayor. Yeah, I'm not, I, I'm not quite sure how I feel about that. Um, <clears throat> Blake, is, uh, he's been a, 
Uh, he's been a trusted friend and ally, and I know that he's not going anywhere. He's, he, he'll likely move on up the chain. Um, but to dispel any rumors, I have zero, zero um, intent of ever running for any kind of other public office, especially in higher office. Um, I'm, I think I'm where the good Lord wants me to be. But having Blake to lean on, you know, he's I'm the elder, I think, of the of all of the three amigos, um, but he's the longest serving. And so I lean on him, and he works with municipalities all across the state. So a lot of times I'll lean on him when I have a question. We don't always agree, but um, it's always nice to have somebody who has been there, done that, that, that I can talk to and we can work through some, some issues. And Williamson's better for having Blake, you know, as part of one of the three amigos to be able to talk to about issues. Still amigos, he's just not the Still amigo. Anymore. I just may have to drive to Columbia to, to see him, but um, that, that, that actually could be a positive thing too. So. Uh, to have somebody in Columbia's ear, not that we don't already, but um, I think that having someone in the General Assembly who knows and understands local government, a lot of times I feel like that folks in Columbia, they just don't get it. You know, they 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 do things that are detrimental to municipalities and we'll go, hey, wait a minute, no, that's bad. That's really bad. Um, but we have to point it out sometimes, uh, either through the Municipal Association or simple phone calls to our delegation. I think that having somebody who has been there, worked in local government, particularly in municipalities, um, can head off a lot of the bad stuff and bring along some good stuff before it, um, before it becomes a problematic 